welcome to the daily smith figures for our devotional podcast here i am victoria iog your host for today so as usual without further ado let us start with prayer for the lord god almighty king of glory we want to walk in your ways we want to do the same works that jesus did and even greater because he returned to the father and he said that's what we should do Lord, please lead us and guide us in this path. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. So, the title of today's message is How to Obtain Spiritual Power. How to Obtain Spiritual Power. I think the topic is very interesting because if we want to do the works of Jesus, we actually need to walk in power. When you see all these testimonies of God's generals like Smith Wigglesworth, Lester Samuel, A. A. Allen, John Zulek, uh, Catherine Coleman, uh, and so many others because I don't even know all of them yet. But when we see your testimonies, we obviously know that they had to be walking in power and we want to walk in power, right? So I think it's nice that today we are talking about how to obtain spiritual power. And we are going in John chapter 5 verse 44 and Matthew chapter 16, 13 to 19 and 21 to 23 in the New King James Version. Here we go. John chapter 5 verse 44. John chapter 5 verse 44. How can you believe who receive honor from one another and do not seek the honor that comes from the only God? John chapter 5 verse 44. Now Matthew chapter 16, 13 to 19 and 21 to 23 in the New King James Version. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I am? I, the Son of Man, am. So they said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon bar Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. From that time, Jesus began to show to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall not happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, you are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Um, so in Peter's life, we see the natural power and the spiritual power. And the title of today's message is How to Obtain Spiritual Power. Jesus knew that he was supposed to suffer at the cross, he, and at the weeping post, obviously. He knew that he was supposed to suffer, but he was ready to do that because he had to accomplish the will of the Father and because he wanted to save us. He did not seek to save himself, but to save us. He laid down his life for us. So Jesus preferred doing what he was supposed to do instead of going for what the natural human mind would have thought. And we see the natural mind in Peter, who did not want him to go, who did not want him to suffer. You see, generally, you're like, if people had to follow their heart, like, the heart of man would be that he does not want to die, you see. So, like, if people had to follow their heart, they would obviously, more often than not, disobey God. That's why you should not follow your heart, but you should instead follow God's word. Because God's word is always going to be better. This is Peter who was advising Jesus act out of his own, like, heart, if I can say so. But your heart it does not get to determine God's will. Your feelings do not determine God's will. 
it is God's will that that means God's will. So you gotta get in his word, read his word, know his will and go for his will and not for your feelings. That's very important. At times your friends, even your closest people are going to be the ones that the devil is going to try to use to discourage you from doing God's will because they'll say, no, it's too difficult. Are you really going to go as a missionary to that country? You know, the conditions are this way and that way. If God told you to go, go. If God told you to go, go. Don't sacrifice your good works which have a reward already prepared for you if you do those good works to follow what a friend or somebody tells you it's the voice of god that you're supposed to obey on the judgment day when everyone will appear alone before the judgment seat of god you will not get to say father it's the wife that you gave me who told me to do this father it's my friend that you gave me who no you don't get to do that so choose to obey him now him and him only so if you seek to save yourself, it is an offense to God. If you seek to save your own life, it's an offense to God. You have to be ready to lay down your life for the kingdom of God, for the gospel, for whatever God tells you to do. And this is what martyrs have been doing. And in fact, when he said he sent us into the world they were as, as, as witnesses, the world they also for witnesses, it's the martyrs. We are going to suffer for him one way or another. The Bible says that, that whoever desires to to live purely in Christ Jesus is going to be persecuted. If you're not experiencing persecution in one way or another and you call yourself a Christian, I'm really asking myself, like, are you sure that the people around you know that you are Christian? Because it's normal. Persecution is like normal, okay? So, um, we do not have to seek man's favor or earthly power or our feelings or what would naturally seem to be the easy way. We should instead seek God's way, not man's favor, but God's way and God's favor. God is speaking to every one of us and he wants us to like leave the shoreline. He wants us to walk in the will of God. He wants us to walk with him. We should not look to other people to decide what we should do as Christians. We should look to what the Bible says we should do. If we seek to save ourselves, we will never reach the place where we will be able to bind and to lose, as in Matthew chapter 16, verse 19, because we are called to do the binding and the losing. And there's a close companionship between you and Jesus that nobody knows about, where every day you have to choose or to, to choose to obey or choose to disobey, okay? Whether you obey or you disobey, it's always a choice. It's your choice. We have to go through the narrow way. So that we get the power to bind and to lose. We are talking here about how to obtain spiritual power. It's about our choices. Like, let me make it basic, practical. Every day you get to choose. Do I read my Bible today or do I watch nonsense over the television? For example, do I offer to pray for people who are sick around me? Or do I close my eyes and act as if I do not see anything? Do I, do I, when I see someone who's oppressed by a demonic spirit, do I close my eyes as if I do not see anything and move by? Or do I offer to pray for the person? Do I cast the demon spirit out? When I see the poor and the needy, do I close my eyes as if I do not see anything and pass by as quickly as possible? Or do I actually help them out? You see what I mean? It's daily choices. So, I know that Jesus was separated from his own family and his own friends. He had to sacrifice a lot to even sleep. He had to sacrifice sleep because imagine the whole day people are here for you to pray for them and you're still teaching them at night, like late, and then you have to wake up very early to go and pray. He sac- even sleep, he, sac- he sacrificed so much, like honestly. He sacrificed so much, and we are called to sacrifice for the kingdom of God, to seek first the kingdom of God. He showed us the example, basically. He wants us separated unto himself. The life of spiritual power is a life of sacrifices, to be honest. Because when I look at the lives of these people, look at, for example, Smith Wigglesworth, whom we're, whose devotion are we reading? He would not go 30 minutes without praying. And in between those 30 minutes, he would be reading the Bible. He was someone that people did not visit a lot. It's not like many preachers these days who have bodyguards and to even reach them, it's so hard. He was not the type of person that most people would like to get along with. People did not so much enjoy his presence. First of all, because 
he that there are many things that normal in quotes human beings do that he did not do like gossiping you could not come in his house and start talking negatively about someone he would tell you to leave or he would like leave you in the, the room something like that you could not bring a newspaper into his house he considered it to come from the devil he preferred reading the word of god hold for the whole day every 30 minutes praying and in between those 30 minutes he would read the word of god that's a huge sacrifice. Consider the number of hours you spend on social media every day or the number of hours you spend watching television or, or I don't know what else. Or playing PlayStation. I don't even know. I don't even... I've not played for such a long time. But I'm giving an example. But like video games, you see you see what I mean? Like all the time that we spend like going to parties. And I'm not talking about like because there, there are parties and parties. Like I go to parties like early like during the day and where the only things we do is chat and eat nice food and go home very very early i'm not talking about like the parties right if, obviously if you're going to those parties which are immoral and where the drugs and and lots of alcohol to make everybody drunk and everybody seen and stuff like that i i clearly recommend you to stop that but i i, I was talking about other parties like just social events where you mingle with people and you don't do anything wrong. You see what I mean? But if you spend all your time partying, like this type of parties, not the bad type of parties. If you spend all your time doing the stuff and never reading the Bible, never preaching, never reading the world, never getting into his presence, never worshipping, never doing. And God is always in you. If you're a Christian, God is always in you. But are you stopping and to listen to him like that's what i mean by getting his presence he's always with you and in you but i'm talking about like stopping to listen to him actually so like it's a life of sacrifice walking in power is a life of sacrifice and most of these gods generals when you're gonna find out about them you hear that before preaching they will take some of them will take two three hours alone just reading the bible studying the word of god focusing on god's word so like it's a life of sacrifice okay Jesus sacrificed, he laid down his life, okay? The way is narrow. See Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 to 14. And there are friendships that some people hold on so much to. Like, Jesus, he, he look at how he spoke to Peter. Some people would be so scared to tell your friend, you are trying to take me out of the path of God because I don't want to offend anybody. Jesus did not offend anybody. Let me tell you that Jesus offended many people, okay? He said the truth and the truth will be bound to offend people. Some people are going to be offended, okay? Jesus was not scared to tell Peter, get behind me, Satan, because he was not speaking to Peter, but the devil was using Peter at that moment. And some people don't never get to do that or never get to like realize, to make the distinction between, because the enemy knows you, he studies you, he's been studying human beings for a very, very, very long time. He knows which friend he should pass through to tell you whatever he wants to tell you, to convince you to do whatever he wants to convince you to do. Wisdom is also discerning that this, these words cannot be from God. Though the face that's speaking to me, though it's my friend, though it's a snake that's speaking to me, though it's my friend, though it's a donkey that's speaking to me, an animal, because some people like experience instant animals speaking to them. Or in dreams, they see faces or animals speaking to them. That's why I took examples of snakes and, and, and donkeys. And even like Eve, like the, de the devil came in the form of the snake to speak to Eve, right? The devil can take any form he wants, any voice he wants to speak to you and the way that he thinks is going to convince you. You see what I mean? But wisdom is also discerning through the Holy Spirit that, wait, this cannot, this this sentence. And the devil even through your thoughts, he will try to speak in your thoughts. He doesn't even need somebody. He At times, he, he will just like come in your thoughts and try to put things there or in your dreams. And it's wisdom to discern that, wait. This thing is not of God. This thing is against the word of God. This thing is this thing. And you say, get behind me, Satan. That's that's part of walking in spiritual power, you know. So, uh, you and another thing about walking in spiritual power is, as Mitchell's word says here, you will not be able to bind and lose if you have sin in you. There is not one person who is able to deal with the sins of others if he is not free himself. And before you say something else, listen to this. The Bible says, for them, the sun set free is free indeed. The Bible, your Bible says that 
you have been delivered from the power of sin, that you've been translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light, that you are no more a slave to see that's what's written in your Bible. So you gotta believe it and stop, as I usually say, stop listening to the preachers who tell you that you will be addicted to a specific sin all your life and that it is God who wants you to be addicted to teach you something. God doesn't get anything in seeing you sin every single day with the same problem. He doesn't get anything when he sees you sin. He does not, it does not bring any glory to him. It does not teach anything thing good to you okay perhaps you learn things along the line when you went through all the stuff but he it is not god trying to teach you something it is the devil who wants to keep you in bondage and jesus died for you to be free from that bondage okay the moment you start believing it you will start experiencing the freedom okay believing it standing firm on it declaring it confessing it reading the scriptures about it and standing firm and commanding those things to live in the name of jesus christ okay it starts with your desire to be free and your knowledge of the truth. Okay, so he gave us the Holy Spirit. The Lord who is able to set free lives in us, okay? The one who sets people free. The one who destroys the works of the devil. He is in us. Jesus is in us. The Holy Spirit is in us. So whatever the thing you're going through, the, whatever the thing in which you are bound to, whom the Son sets free is free indeed, Okay? Do you believe that God, the Father in heaven, would make you judge over a kingdom if there were anything crooked in you? Do you believe that you'll be able to bind and lose unless you are free yourself? Everyone who, has, everyone who is in Christ has the living Christ within him. This person, Jesus, who is capable to put to death all sin because he said he came to take away the sins of the world, not to leave the world in his sins, but to take the sins away. It applies to every individual. He came to destroy the works of the devil in your life, in my life, to set me free from sin, to set you free from sin. You don't have to live in bondage to sin any other day. I'm serious. This is the Bible. So with Jesus' last words on earth, we have, he gave us a great commission. The need for discipleship has never ceased. It is still true. Some churches are weak because they do not apply discipleship. And he did not say that it's some people who have to do discipleship. He did not say that it's reserved for pastors or priests, please. It's every one of us who has to be discipling people alongside. You have to be somebody's disciple and there have to be people after you who are this, whom you are discipling. You are, we have to pass it on. We have to pass the word on. Christ has to be a foundation and we have to pass it on. So... Let's get back to Peter's case. He probably had great sympathy for Jesus. He did not want his Lord to be crucified. He did not want to see him suffer. But the natural, the way of natural mind is not the way of God. God's ways are higher than our ways. God's path is better than our path. So if we have to suffer persecution for Christ's sake and that it will bring glory to God, let us go for the persecution. Basically. Like, in a sense... Do not stop preaching the gospel because you are afraid that people are going to persecute you. If you do that, you are getting out of the will of God. That's what I'm trying to say, okay? So Jesus at that moment replied the right way. Get behind me, Satan. And at times, that voice would be in your head. That voice trying to discourage you. Or that voice would be through your spouse, your friends, your sisters, your brothers, whoever the devil wants to use to put those thoughts in your mind and to discourage you from doing what God told you to do. He's going to do it. And it's up to you to be wise enough to know that this is not coming from God and to refuse it, to reject it, to rebuke it, to cast it away. So, to summarize everything that we have said from the beginning, how to obtain spiritual power, the first thing, obviously, obviously, is coming to Christ, surrender your life to Jesus, ask him to be your Lord and Savior and decide to start obeying him. Second thing, reading the word of God every day, like, immersing yourself in the atmosphere of the word of God, surrounding yourself with like-minded believers. You understand where I'm getting, right? Worshiping God every day, like being in the world. Obviously, next thing, receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. This is very, 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 very important because the baptism of the Holy Spirit is the one who endows you with power. The Holy Spirit is the one who endows you with power. And next thing, get out of sin. Get out of sin. You can, you should, if you can, make a list of things that you know these things should not be in my life and start waging war against it. Find scriptures against it, command it to live. The devil will at first not want to live, but when you'll be bombarding those spirits with scriptures, they'll get stuffed, they would get tired, they would get, they will not be okay. 
being in your life. That's it's as easy as that. When every time they'll tend to you say, Hey, get out in the name of Jesus, come out. When you command them, when you rebuke them, when you fight them, they are going to leave. They have to leave because that's what the Bible says. And uh yeah. Use the name of Jesus, there's power in the name of Jesus. Stand firm on him, hold fast to him, and walk in his ways, walk in obedience, and get discernment. Get discernment to recognize that this is coming from God, this is not coming from God, and refuse what is not coming from God. Pray in tongues every day, and we're going to talk more again about power throughout like this devotion out by God's grace. So, um, I will end with this quote by Smith because what? If you try to go the easy way, you cannot be Jesus' disciple. If you try to go the easy way, you cannot be Jesus' disciple. Let us pray. Father Lord God Almighty, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, we thank you because there is power in the name of Jesus and because your Holy Spirit fills us with power. And I thank, we thank you because you have paid the price for us to be free from every addiction and free from every sin. Thank you, Lord, because it is true, it is your word. So, Lord, I pray that you reveal this truth to the people who are listening to this by his stripes you are healed by his stripes you are healed he has set you free from sin go the son has set you free you are free and free indeed in jesus christ's name amen and i will invite you to read romans chapter 6 romans chapter 7 and romans chapter 8 and god bless you and please do not forget to share testimonies with me on social media and also to share this on social media with your friends loved ones family whoever may need to listen to it bless people with the word of god sincerely and seriously and make yourself available for tomorrow by god's grace and bye bye